I'm going to talk to you today about some challenges that we've had with our CPM program and some successes. One of the challenges that we've been faced with is our rumble strips. Our safety program about 15 years ago decided that we we're going to do centerline rumbles for the entire non-freeway system. So we um, thought there might be some issues with that from a maintenance standpoint and initially there didn't seem to be but um, uh, as years have gone on we see more that being more of a challenge and then I'm going to talk about uh, our southwest region and their success with chip seals when we do our first chip seal on a, a project that has got rumbles where we are pretty good shape not to have to regrind those rumbles in. We found we still get some benefit from the rumble. And scoping is a challenge over time because of the distress at the long joint. We've got some other challenges with, uh, with grinding the rumbles in where the joint seams don't match very well. And then we're starting to implement some new sinusoidal rumbles. I don't know how many of the agencies are doing that, but uh, we think that that could be a challenge as well, that we might not, <laughs> they're shallower and uh, we, we might not fare so well on that first uh, treatment without having to grind something back in. So just a couple of photos, filling the, filling the rumbles in with a chip. When we found that even uh, a double chip seal, we still get some benefit from those centerline rumbles. And this, this one on the right is where we tried to regrind rumbles back in after we chip sealed. And you can see the deterioration we're seeing at the longitudinal joint. And a lot of the times these pavements, that's, that's the only issue. There really isn't that much uh, transverse cracking, but it's the long joints that give us problems, especially as we're doing subsequent CPM treatments over old ones. So from the scoping standpoint, the, the message I, I try to convey to the different offices setting these projects up is um, if, it, if the joint's clean and tight um, and there wasn't a prior chip seal treatment that they can do it without regrinding the rumbles in. Uh, and if there's a little bit of distress and the chips, we've got a chip seal already down. We tend to go with microsurface to fill those and to uh, regrind those back in. So, um, and I'm really interested to find out what other agencies are doing in regards to this too. Uh, a lot of times we'll have some separation of that longitudinal joint, but the HMA integrity is still good. So. We try to talk to our offices about getting some mastic set up on those projects to fill those. And then we would go back to, to number two there. And if uh, there's no treatment prior, then you can just fill those back in. Um, some of those, you know, we the projects we're scoping now are for 2024, so we're about two years out scoping our projects for preventive maintenance. And a lot of times you'll see some distress and you kind of have to predict what's gonna happen over the next couple of years before the project's let. So we're trying to get our offices to set up some quantity of repair based on what they think the distress might be. And we've had some with pretty poor, poor performance, like maybe the, the first picture I showed you there where we do have to go in and mill two feet and fill that with HMA. Just a photo there of that joint separation in the lower left corner and uh, using mastic to fill that joint. Then I was talking about some of the challenges with regrinding back in with microsurfacing, this is a couple of projects that were done recently where we didn't get a really good even grind of those rumbles in the pavement to get kind of the Christmas tree look there on the right side. Um, that's, I think, more of an issue with the, the seam 
not matching very well. And it happens not just with micro, but that happens as well with other, uh, with, with HMA resurfacing. And I wanted to just share one of our success stories. This is uh, a presentation that our Southwest region put together and looking at single course overlays versus two course overlays with CPM treatments and uh, just the benefit that they could see by doing the single course was less than half the course of a, of a two course overlay because of the improvements that take place when you have to do that reconstruction. And they're able to get as much life really with a single course overlay and a chip seal on a project. And it allows them to get a lot more lane miles done. Um, and because there's, uh, they're pressed to use a lot of their funding on the freeway system, it's really the only way that they can keep their non-freeway system together, really. They were saying that we need to do so many miles a year with a single course or chip seal over a single course just to keep our system at the same point it is at. So just some data there showing what they have spent over the last three, four years, I guess it's predicting 2024 or two, of what they've been able to do as far as lane miles using the chip seal over the single course versus doing two course overlays. And um, the last item there, just saying that there's 11 million in candidate projects that they have, but they only have funding um, for three to three and a half million dollars for that. So and that's a message that we've been getting from all of our regions that they don't think that there's, there's enough money in the pre preventive maintenance program that they could use a lot more to try to keep their non-freeway system in, in good shape. That's just a map showing all the miles in that region that they feel are candidates for chip seals. The other thing that they've, they've really expanded the use of chip seals through towns. I see them doing a lot more of that than, than has been done in the past. And I think the towns are starting to buy into it as a preventive maintenance tool. We used to you know, be, be a real PR problem going through towns. But some of the smaller towns, I think especially with the fog seal, really like getting their their streets chipped because they know that it's going to be a long time before they get funding to, to do any reconstruction. So that's all I have. Tyler is our, uh, Tyler Hunt's our new CPM engineer. He called me and said he had emergency back surgery last weekend, so he wasn't up for the trip today. So I offered to do the presentation. Thanks a lot. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.